Today we're going to be talking about setting up a multilingual website with Drupal. When you first install Drupal 8, one of the first options you have is the language of installation. The default is English, and for most multilingual sites, you'll pick English. But if you're trying to set up a website in a language other than English, where you only have one language, you'll pick that language now. So for this site, I'm going to start with English and continue on with the installation. Once Drupal is installed, the first thing we're going to do is turn on the core multilingual modules. We'll go over to Extend, and scroll down to the section Multilingual, and I'm going to turn on all four modules. So you might wonder why there are four modules and not just one. And the reason is that there's different types of multilingual websites. The language module provides the most basic core multilingual functionality, which allows you to install multiple languages. Interface translation allows you to translate text that comes in code with modules and themes. Content translation is for translating all kinds of content like nodes, taxonomy terms, um, and blocks, other types of content. And then the configuration translation is for all the configuration text that you enter in as you build out your Drupal site, like the titles of views and things like that. Once those four modules are enabled, my next step is to go ahead and add another language and I actually have a link to do that right here. It's going to take me over to the configuration section of the site, down underneath regional and language, and onto the languages page. And from here, I'm going to go and add a second language. So I can pick one from the list. Let's see, we'll add French. I'm in Montreal, so French is the most common language I would want to add. So when I install French on this site, what, what happens is that translations from localize.drupal.org get added to my site. Uh, localize.drupal.org is a site that you should know about. Uh, translators who volunteer their time, uh, come here to translate text that comes with Drupal. Uh, and that goes for Drupal core as well as contributed modules. And whenever I install a new language, the volunteer translated strings for that language get added to my site. And if I install a new module, the translations for that module get added automatically. This only goes for text that comes in code. So when I add new content to my site or I add interface text through configuration, those pieces of text I have to translate myself. And for French, the coverage is really good. We can see that almost all of the text on our site in terms of interface text is now going to be translated. Now that I have two languages enabled on the site, I'm going to head over to the Detection and Selection tab here. Detection and Selection is maybe a confusing concept at first, but the idea is that this page will determine what language a certain page is loaded in at any given point in time. So I can see here that the detection method that's enabled by default is language from the URL, path prefix, or domain. So that means that when you land on any page on the site, Drupal's going to look at the path and see which language the page should be loaded in. So in my case, English or French. And if I go over and configure this option, I can see that the prefix fr is going to be added to all the French paths. And if I want the prefix en, to be added to the English paths, which is a pretty standard language prefix, uh, I can enter that in as well. The other option is domain. So if you have a different domain name for different languages, you can choose that option. It's a little more tricky to set up 
in a development environment, but that's also a possibility. So back on the detection and selection page, I can see that there are some other methods of detection available other than the URL. And you might wonder why that's necessary. Shouldn't the site always use the URL? So it turns out that some pages, like the home page, aren't going to have a language prefix in the URL unless the users entered that in or it was in the link that they were provided. So the idea is to have a fallback option. Uh, one option that you can enable is the browser. So that would mean that if my browser was configured to be in French and I go to the home page of the site and there's no language prefix, then the site is going to be displayed in French. So that's often a, a good option that you'd want to pick. Um, and the default that's selected here that's grayed out is just going to display the site in the default language, which if you remember from over here was English. So currently, if I go to the home page of the site and there's no EN or FR in the prefix, then the site's going to be displayed in English. So let's move on to some other configuration that I'm going to have to do for my multilingual site. One thing we'll need to do is head over to the block layout page and add a language switcher. So most multilingual sites have some kind of language switcher where you can swap between, say, English and French. So if I go to the block layout page, I can decide where I want my language switcher to be and click place block and look for the language switcher block and put it on the page. You'll also notice that now that we have the multilingual modules enabled, we're going to have this new visibility option to display blocks based on language. But at this point, I want the language switcher to always be displayed, so I'm not going to pick any visibility restrictions. I'm just going to click Save Block to put the language switcher in the header. And now if I head back to the site, I should see that showing up here. Now that I have the language switcher appearing on the site, I can see that I can swap between English and French really easily. So if I click on the French link, the site interface switches into French, and if I click back on English, it's going to all switch back. The next thing I'm going to look at is the translation of content. And that's something that we have to set up for each type of content on the site. And the main page where I'm going to do all that configuration is over under Configuration, Regional and Language, and I'm going to go to Content, Language, and Translation. And what I see here is a list of entity types on the site. Um, so if I click on Content, Content refers to nodes. If you see the word Content in Drupal, it often is kind of interchangeable with the word node. And so this shows me a list of the content types on my site, and I can pick which ones are going to be translatable. So just to emphasize, this doesn't actually translate anything. It just sets up these types of content so that they'll be translatable. So you're going to see a Translate tab on each piece of content, and you can go ahead and add it in each of your languages. So after I check off content, I can decide that I want articles and basic pages to be translatable. And we can see that there's all these checkboxes here for each of the fields on these content types, and those are all checked off. So sometimes we don't want to translate everything about a piece of content. For example, you might not want to translate a date because the, let's say, the event is going to happen on the same date in all languages, so there's no reason to do the translation. And if we take a look, the image field by default is translatable, but only the alt text and the title text. The actual file isn't translatable. So if you know that you're going to have language specific images and the actual files need to be different, you'd have to go and make sure this is checked off as well. 
Once I've saved those settings, I'm going to head over to the interface translation section. User interface translation. And this section is all about translating the strings that come with Drupal code. And uh, we already saw that these translations get added automatically when we installed Drupal. All of these got pulled in from localized.drupal.org. But sometimes we want to update these translations to customize them. For example, I live in Quebec where people speak French, but the French is slightly different than the French that's used in France. And so sometimes we like to make little updates to the, the text to keep them in line with the usage here. So you can go ahead and search through this interface for text that appears on your site, and then go ahead and update those translations. The last place that I'm going to show you in terms of multilingual configuration is over in the configuration translation section. So that's under regional and language, and I'm going to click on configuration translation. And this one is a little tricky to understand, if, especially if you're not familiar with Drupal. When you're setting up a Drupal site, there's a lot of configuration that you add that's language specific. So for example, if you're adding a list of content and you call it recent news, that's text that you'll want to translate for a multilingual site. So configuration translation is where you can translate text like that. Um, so the views example is a good one because we often add a lot of views, a lot of lists of content. And in views, there's many places where you can add text, many parts of the configuration. Uh, so if I go ahead and click on, for view, if I click on list, I can see a list of all the views, all the different types of content listings on my site. And for each one, I have this nice translate button. So I'm going to translate recent content. This is going to take me uh, to the original view with the English text. If I go over to the French and I click edit, I'll be able to translate all of the text added to the view. And this interface here gives me the ability to dig down into all the different view settings. So at this point, you've seen each piece of a multilingual Drupal site. You've seen how you can install new languages, how you can set up content to be translated, how you can translate the user interface that comes with Drupal code, and finally, how you can translate configuration that you've added when you've been setting up your modules.